Matthew chapter 8. I'm going to begin reading in verse number 23. We're also going to be in Matthew chapter 14 as well. If you stand real quick for the reading of God's Word. <coughs> Excuse me. Verse 23. And when he was entered into the ship, his disciples followed him. Talking about Jesus. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with waves, but he was asleep. And the disciples came to him and woke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he saith unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. Matthew chapter 14. Verse 24. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And cried out, they cried out for fear. And straight away, Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, Bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, where, why, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Let us pray. God, we come before you. We thank you for your word and its anointing. God, we thank, that your word, thank you that your word does not return void unto you. God, we ask that it go forth in encouragement. And power tonight, and we love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. And the church says, Amen. Amen. I want to preach to you real quick on the subject of operator, please. Operator, please. Many of us young folk, myself included, don't remember. But there was a time you could pick up your phone and you didn't have it like this. It was stuck to a wall, had a cord on it. And I remember my mother talking on the home phone and having like that 30 foot cord, you know, so she could walk from the kitchen to the dining room and have all the space with the phone in her ear cooking, you know, you know how it was, some of you. But there was a time that you couldn't even dial a number. Simply had to certain places of business and things like that. You had to pick up the phone and it would take you from one operator and you would ask for another operator and they would dispatch your call. You would give them a number, you would give them a name, or you would give them an address. There's all been kind of different forms of, of operators in our life. There's still operators today. We have 911 operators, we have operators at the place I work. and. We, we, at one of our stations, there are 12-hour shifts all night. There's someone at that station monitoring everything, and they're always looking out at, for everything. They're vigilant. They're working. They're doing something. They're operating something all the time. There's always something to be done. You say, what does that have to do with this Scripture? I want you to notice with me tonight that these portions of Scripture are two separate events because they're recorded in the same book. 
we see that they're two separate events. In one event, Jesus is asleep in the boat. In the other event, Jesus comes to them walking on the water. I'm not exactly going to preach on those things tonight, but I do want to make it clear the similarities of this story. They're both on a boat. Both of these stories, they're on a boat. There's a storm. There's Jesus. But there is a phrase that Jesus says in both of these stories that began to stick with me in in my time of prayer last evening. And it's this. He says in Matthew chapter 14 and verse 31, after he reaches down and he grabs hold of Peter's hand, he says, O thou of little faith. O thou of little faith. We see in Matthew Chapter 8 and verse 26, when they wake him up and say, we perish, we perish, we'll perish if you don't save us. He says, why are you fearful, O ye of little faith? O ye of little faith. I want you to know that the Lord has, has been testing me to trust him more and more. And I want you to know that in this passages of scripture it's the very same thing that the Lord is asking and doing with his disciples is they're in the middle of a trial they're in the middle of a storm and we know of physical storms and what they're capable of but we know of spiritual storms where it's chaos and I will tell you spiritually in this nation and in many of your lives there's chaos going on right now And the thing about storms in the physical is the same in the spiritual. Oftentimes, Sister Marcella, it's easy to lose our direction. It's easy to become fearful when you don't know what the plans are for tomorrow. It is easy to become anxious. It is easy to become depressed because as in a physical storm, it seems to happen in the spiritual. uh, It's overcast. Your vision is not what it was Uh, And all you know is it seems like you're just going with the flow and you have to just go wherever the winds take you because you seem so out of control. It's not in your power. It's not in your mind. It's nothing that you can do to hold on to the situation. But I find it fascinating that Jesus' first words after these events have taken place is He comments about their faith. He makes comments about their faith. Hear me tonight. I, I, I'm telling you that I, I, I am in prayer that the Lord just simply told me, I'm rocking the boat. A lot of people think it's just situations. It's, it's all this. I, I want you to know that God is not out of control of what's going on in your life. He's not out of control of what's going on in this city. He's not out of, he's, he, he doesn't, it's not out of control. It seems like chaos to us. But in the midst of it all, God knows what's going on. And the Bible tells us in Hebrews that he'll shake things that can be shaken. But that we belong to a kingdom that cannot be shaken. But it seems like in this story, these men, their faith was shaken. And Jesus makes the comment, O ye of little faith. O ye of little faith. But I want you to understand what is happening in these scriptures, this trial, this testing, this storm, this situation, is that God through Christ is looking for us to make a choice. Hear me. We've talked about victory a lot lately. We talked about last week how victory is a choice. Freedom is a choice. You've got to choose to believe in what this word says about your life. Understand this. Jesus doesn't, the, the, the Bible's full of things uh, where it says we're, we're conquerors. We're more than conquerors through Christ that loved us. We're overcomers. We quote all those things and we get all excited. But do you realize why they're in the Bible is because God tells us, uh, Jesus tells us uh, that we will go through things. The reason we have to overcome is because we have obstacles. The reason we have to conquer is because we have enemies. You following me? 
The reason that, that we have to adapt our life to be like Christ, as this Bible teaches us, uh, is because he says, I have overcome the world. Because you will have tribulation. You will have trials. Uh, what he's saying is you will have storms. Slaying a foundation here. You will have storms. But what the choice is for the people of God tonight in the storm that this nation may find itself in spiritually, it's not just a political storm. I want you to know what things that happen in the natural are because of things that's going on in the supernatural realm. Understand me. The Bible tells us that the devil is the prince and the power of the air. But here's what the Bible also says, is that the earth is his and the fullness thereof. And I know there's chaos going on all over the place, and it may be in your very home, your marriage, your life, your relationships, whatever. But I want you to know in the middle of those trials, you not only have to have, have, to have a choice of victory, uh, but really it all boils down to uh, you are going to have to make the choice uh, to operate in faith. You have to make a choice to operate in faith. Jesus says, oh, you have little faith because the disciples lost sight of who, 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 who was with them, who was for them, who was watching them, who was leading and guiding them. They thought it was over. They became fearful. They began to, to become consumed by what was going on around them. And Jesus said what it was. The reason that fear slipped in, kept it, crept in, the reason that fear begin to take hold of your life uh, is because you lost sight of your faith. Understand the storms of this life uh, do not come to, to weaken you. Uh, do not come uh, to beat you up. Uh, they're, not, they're, they're not there just to be a, an obstacle. Uh, but understand this. Uh, they are there because Jesus was using this, uh, this storm uh, to see uh, if his disciples would operate in faith. So I want you to know that we live in a time where we have a choice to make, are we going to operate in faith? The Bible tells us this in James chapter 2. Even so faith, in verse 17, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. And I want you to know that it's not just talking about uh, that you have to do works. Listen, I, I believe that we're saved by grace and, and by, by, by faith, by, by, through faith, by grace. I believe we're saved that way. Yes, absolutely. There's nothing I can do to earn my salvation. But what James begins to tell the church uh, is if you have faith in God, uh, your faith better go to work for God. Hear me, understand uh, what he's telling the people of God uh, in this statement uh, is what he's saying is I need someone uh, to operate uh, in their faith. Uh, people think this is clothing people. Uh, people think this is just feeding people. Uh, I want you to know those are great works of faith. Uh, those are good things. Uh, but lost people can do those. Uh, lost people can feed the hungry. Uh, lost, I've seen, I had an uncle uh, that was never, uh, never a Christian. Uh, he, he confessed uh, the Lord as his Savior on his deathbed. But I will tell you this, Sister Mary, he was the nicest man you would ever meet. He, he would give you the shirt off his back. He would do anything for you. Nice people can do nice things. But what the believe, what's different about the believer is what Jesus told his disciples in Mark chapter 16 is that these signs shall follow them that believe. Your faith should be worked out, not just in physical things, but he's saying, I think, I believe believe that your faith needs to go to work in supernatural things. What, what was going on is that Jesus steps onto the scene, questions their faith, and calms the storm. What he was saying is, do you not realize that you have the ability through faith to cause the storm to see? Do you not realize, as he tells them in Mark chapter 11, that you 
have the ability through faith uh, to speak unto that mountain, uh, say, be thou removed, uh, be thou cast into the sea. Uh, I'm telling you what God is wanting in this hour uh, is he's calling up uh, saying, can you give me an operator, please? Uh, I need someone that's going to operate in faith, uh, not fear. Uh, I don't need someone that's afraid. Uh, I don't need someone that's backward. Uh, I don't need someone. I need someone that will put all their personality traits uh, to the back burner uh, and say, Jesus, uh, if you need me to step out of the boat, uh, I know it's raining. Uh, I know it's pouring. Uh, I know it looks bad. Uh, I may be a little uncomfortable, uh, but Jesus, I'll get out of the boat. Uh, I'll operate in faith. Uh, I'll walk on the water. Uh, I'll pray. Uh, I'll lay hands on them. Uh, I'll pray the prayer of faith. I'll lead them to Christ. Uh, Jesus, whatever you need, uh, I'm your operator. Uh, I'll operate in faith. He's saying, I need an operator. I need someone that's going to operate in faith. Even with the boat rocking. I'll tell you this. (coughs) Forgive me. I'll tell you this. Whether you believe it or not, comfort will kill you. Heard a man say at one time like this, who's in more danger, the comfortable or the persecuted? Who's in more danger? In the physical, we would say the persecuted. But he would say, oh no, in the spiritual, it's quite the contrary. You say, this doesn't sound encouraging at all. I'm trying to encourage you that it doesn't matter what you're going in. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what it's looked like. You can be an operator of faith. What did operators do in that time that I was speaking about in my open? Is they knew where to put your call. They knew where things belonged. Our operators at our station, they can't make mistakes because if they do, the whole place goes boom. They got to know where everything goes. They're working with natural gas. It's a, it's a big deal. They've got to know what's going on. And they know what valves to hit. They know what buttons to push. They know how to do it. I want you to understand uh, that operating in faith uh, is saying, God, I may not know what put buttons to push. Uh, I may not know what valves to turn. Uh, I may not know what, where to put your call. Uh, uh, all I'm saying is uh, I'm going to step out uh, and I'm going to ask your spirit to lead me uh, and I'm going to operate in faith and I'm going to allow you to take me to places uh, that I've never been, do things that I've never done. Uh, but you've got to understand uh, for you to be an operator of faith uh, requires you to be uncomfortable. Comfort will absolutely kill you. I will tell you this. It is much harder to become stronger and it's much easier to become weaker. And I've heard in the church, can I just be a pastor for a moment? I'm not comfortable doing that. I want you to know we live in a day and age where that is no longer an excuse. Because I want you to to get this in your spirit. Uh, There was a time in our pastor's life where he was not comfortable uh, getting behind a platform uh, and preaching to God's people. uh, But he had an encounter with Jesus Christ. uh, And he said, God, I may not know what I'm doing. Uh, I I just know that you're calling me. uh, And I know that that things uh, may seem uneasy in my spirit. uh, But God, I'm going to step out in faith. uh, And I tell our young people all the time, uh, if you will step out in faith, uh, trust me, uh, trust me. Trust God, uh, he will meet you there. Uh, There's days that our pastor and myself uh, get up behind this platform. Uh, We don't know what to preach, uh, but here's what I know. uh, Is there is a preacher by the name of the Holy Spirit uh, that can move upon a vessel uh, that'll say, I'm an operator. Uh, I'll step out. Uh, I'll get uncomfortable. Uh, I don't want God to look at me uh, and say, oh, ye have little faith. Uh, I want him to look at me uh, and say, no, you are. Uh, You are a son uh, that had crazy faith. Uh, You lay hands on the sick and saw them recover. You spoke to the mountain and saw it move. Oh, hear me tonight. I know it's Wednesday and it's easy to be comfortable, but can I rock the boat a little bit and say we should shout, we should praise God for what he's doing in this church, in our nation, in these young people. You should praise God for what he's doing in the nations across this land, across this world because there are operators of faith that are stepping up 
up in the middle of the storm and saying, God, call me. Use me. I've got faith. I believe in you. I trust in you. I have works. I have faith. And I work my faith. Hear me. We've got to become uncomfortable. I'll be transparent with you tonight. Pastors heard me say this. Other people's heard me say this. I'm just being honest. You know one thing I don't like to do? I'm uncomfortable with. I, I don't like to start service. I'll be honest with you. It's very uncomfortable. Because I got to get everybody's attention. And we ain't talking about 10, 11, 12 people. Sunday mornings, man, we got a lot of people in here. I got to get everybody's attention. I got to get them focused on Jesus. Uh, there, there's a lot that goes into It's not my comfort zone. But you know what the fact is? The fact is, is that man of God said, will you help? We, and I said, I will do whatever I need to do to help you. And if it means being uncomfortable, here's the fact is. Here's what you need to understand. God, even if I'm uncomfortable, just add it to my resume. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll scrub the toilets. I'll volunteer. I'll do whatever you want me to do. Just add it to my resume. I may not be comfortable with it, but just add it to my house. I'll, I'll, I'll do it. I'll learn it. I'll grow in it. I'll take advantage. Uh, God, I, I'll, I'll use it. Uh, I'll use it. And you know what? Uh, I took something that I didn't like. Uh, I didn't care for. Uh, now I study over it. Uh, I pray over it. I don't just get up uh, and wing it on Sunday morning. I'm excited to open. Uh, I want to open. Uh, I'd rather open. Uh, and you know why? Uh, it's because that man of God said, let me stretch you. Uh, let me get you out of the boat. Uh, let me rock you a little bit. Uh, just like Jesus would. Uh, and I said, okay, uh, God, uh, I'm going to I leap out here in faith. You say, oh, it's just opening service. But I want you to know, there was a time I didn't see myself here. My mother saw me here. My father saw me doing this. My family saw me doing this. Oh, but Jay didn't want nothing to do with it. I'll tell you that. But then my father kept asking, come on, you need to open up your mouth. You need to open up your mouth. You need to open up your mouth. Listen, we've got to stop sitting on the sidelines saying, oh, that's not me. Oh, I can't worship that way. I can't praise that way. I can't pray that way. I can't preach like that. I can't teach Sunday school like that. I, I, I can't take up the offering. I can't. Listen, if we would get rid of the I can'ts, you would see mountains move. You would see a sickness healed. You would see a crazy thing. God, I can't pray for them. Oh, yes, you can. You take a step of faith. Why? Because we walk by faith and not by sight. It's not what it looks like. You step out on faith. You say, God, God, I don't even know what to pray over him. Just begin to declare God's word. Oh, God says. Oh, God says. Oh, God says. Hear me tonight. I know it's Wednesday. Oh, but hear me. Understand this. I need some operators in this house. I need some people that'll say, I'll step up. I'll do it, pastor. Whatever needs done. I'll come into service. I'll pray. I'll be ready. I'll, I'll prepare the atmosphere. Oh, pastor, I'll come. I'll shake Shake hands in the foyer. I'll shake hands of a stranger. Whatever it needs, whatever needs done. I just need some operators, please. Operators. Jesus put them in a situation where they, where they were in control of their decisions. Because here's what you need to realize. Even in the storm, Jesus was still there. You ever taken a test in school? Teacher's still in the classroom, but you take the test. Teacher don't say anything. Teacher don't do anything. But you sitting at the desk, and you taking the test. They ain't there to help you. They're there to teach you. They're there to push you. They're there to stretch your mind, to see what you know, to see what decisions you'll make. And Jesus is doing the same thing in these portions of Scripture. And he's saying, oh, you have little faith. You made the wrong choice. Because uh, in the middle of the storm, I need people uh, to stop being afraid. Uh, in the middle of the storm, I need to stop. I need to, I, I need to have people that, that aren't going to be anxious. Uh, in the middle of the storm, I need people that are willing to operate in faith. We 
Why would he put them through the storm? Because understand, they would go through greater storms. Do you understand that Peter on the day of Pentecost standing up and preaching? He was preaching to the same people. The same people that almost two months earlier were saying to Jesus, crucify him. Because when you become an operator of faith, understand faith builds confidence. Because to have faith is to be confident. Faith builds confidence. Confidence builds boldness. Boldness turns into authority. And authority turns into a demonstration. To come to the music tonight. Why is it so important to operate in faith in the day that we're living in? It's because we need people that are willing to operate in that faith because people that are willing to operate in that faith are going to be bold. And bold emboldened by the Spirit. Listen, I've seen some of the meekest, quietest people that you would ever meet. Just real soft-spoken. But you let the Holy Spirit move. And they'll call every devil in hell out and confront it. I don't know what your life looks like. (coughs) I don't know what it looks like. It may be calm, but it may be a storm. But it doesn't matter. Either way, you need to learn how to operate in faith in the middle of the storm. Peter began to to step out of the boat, right? I've said it before, I'll say it again. I've grown up in church and I've seen people criticize people for all kinds of things. Singing, preaching, oh, they're not good, they're not this, they're not that. I remember one time years ago, I just looked at someone and said, you can criticize them all you want to, but at least they're out of the boat. at me real here's the fact we all should be out of the boat but when Peter stumbled Jesus said to him why did you doubt No, the Holy Spirit's still calling on this day and hour that we live in. And I, I know there's people that'll say, Oh God, use me, use me, use me. And he's calling and he's calling. And he said, I'm just need, I just need an operator. I just need someone that's gonna operate. In faith. That's not what I'm called to. I'm not comfortable with that. I had a relative of mine said he was in service a few months ago. Well, about a year or so ago now. He's praying. God, I know you have a call on my life. Give me something, anything that you want me to do. I just want to begin to work in your kingdom. I don't know exactly what my calling is, but just give me something to do. 
I just want to do something in your kingdom. He said, one, but two, three minutes later, a man in their church walked up to him and said, hey, uh, we need people in our bus ministry. He said, we, we, we need drivers. We, we try to be able to have enough drivers where we can rotate so not everybody has to do it every Sunday. He said, it's an awesome work and, and we bus kids, all, all bring kids in in vans like, like you wouldn't believe. It'd be a great, great opportunity and the Lord just brought you to my mind. And he was, my cousin was telling me this and he said, I turned to him and said, I'll think about that. He said, he went back to worshiping. He said, the Lord spoke to him. And he said, did you not just ask? to be used he said the conviction of the Holy Spirit set in he went and found that man he said I'll do it if I need to do it every Sunday I'll do it he's calling this is not all of ministry Again, I was raised in Pentecost and we're good at telling everybody they're a preacher. Even if they ain't. But hear me tonight. I thank God for good preachers. We need them. But that's not all the Holy Spirit's calling. He said, I need operators. I need Sunday school teachers. I need intercessors. I need missionaries. I need prophets. I need evangelists. I need people full of faith because people full of faith have confidence. People full of confidence have boldness. And people of boldness have authority. He's calling. Operator, please. Please, please. I need an operator. Stand with me tonight. Don't tell me that Jesus can't rock the boat. Jesus in John chapter 6 taught a teaching so hard that it says in John 6 and verse 66 that men walked away from him because they said this teaching is too hard. Don't tell me that Jesus can't rock the boat. But you want to know what else Jesus can do? He can calm the storm. He can move upon a sick body. Because understand this. Why did Jesus point out their lack of faith? Because the Bible teaches us in Hebrews 11, 6 that without faith it is impossible to please God. You being apprehensive and fearful about jumping in to the work of the Lord, whatever it may be, you say, I may not know exactly what I'm called to do. Work in the kingdom. Pray. Read your Bible. Let it develop. But we be willing to be used by God. Be willing to operate in faith and you'll see doors open. We hear a lot in this day and age of what the world has to say. Everybody has an opinion. Everybody wants to be seen. Where's the church of Jesus Christ that's saying we don't want to be seen, but we want Him to. Will you operate in faith? If you operate in faith, you'll have victory. Something I always cherished about Pastor Willie Russell, every time I saw that man, from the first time me and Sierra started dating, he'd always say, Terry, he'd say, do you have the victory? Still got the victory?
Because it goes like the old song, I have decided to follow Jesus. There's no turning back. You still got the victory. You still got the faith. Operate in it. Don't just clothe the naked. Don't just feed the hungry. But operate it in the spiritual realm. Let your faith have work. Let your faith go to work. Let your faith be loud. Let it be proud. Throughout this Bible, I'm closing with this. There has always been storms, situations, trials, battles, Genesis to Revelation. You want to know how this world ends? In a battle. Battle, battle, battle. Trial, trial, trial. Storm after storm after storm. But the heroes of our faith, read Hebrews chapter 11, the heroes of our faith are men and women of God. That in the middle of these situations, these terrible situations, said, I'm willing to operate. David facing Goliath, operator. The three Hebrew boys, operator. Daniel, an operator. Moses, an operator. Abraham, an operator. And here's, here is the fact. Jesus tells his disciples in John chapter 14. The works that I do, you'll do greater. You're sitting here looking at me like it can't be no better than Jesus. But you realize the Bible is full of nothing. But you thought Abraham was good. You thought Isaac was good. You thought Jacob was good. You thought Moses was good. You go throughout the, you got Joshua. You have the judges. You have Samuel. You have David. You have Solomon. You have the, the prophets, the major prophets, the minor prophets. Uh, you get to Jesus. How could it get any better than this? But Jesus turns to his disciples and says, you will do greater. This church, this church churches across this world we are not meant to decay we are meant to get better and we were built for this season for this time whatever you're going through it cannot defeat you The only way it can defeat you is for you to turn around and say, I can't do it. I can't do it. Falling is not failure. Quitting is. Stumbling is not failure. Quitting is. So if you're here in this house and you say, I'm going through stuff you don't understand. I don't have to understand. But if you're willing to say, I want to operate in this time that I'm in, hey, some of the greatest, the greatest time, the, some of the times I felt the greatest anointing on my life is when my world was falling apart. The greatest times I the, the, the times I felt the greatest amount of peace in my life is when I shouldn't have had it. The times when I should have been the most fearful is when I didn't have fear. But I have power and I had love and I had a sound mind. Some of the greatest experiences I've had in His Spirit is when I've, I've ministered after losing someone that I love. And I didn't realize it for years and years. And it's not, oh, look at Jay. I, I just tell you, there's people in this room that have done the same thing. You said, I'm willing to operate. Even when the clouds are covering every, all my vision, every, every area, area of sight. So who will operate tonight? If you're willing to say, God, use me. I want you to come to these altars.
You can say, why does he ask us to come? That's a step of faith. Because it is a sign. It is a sign to God that I'm serious. I'm going to ask you to come. Say, I'm willing to be an operator. As they sing tonight, I'm willing to operate in faith. Praise the Lord, everybody. I hope that you have enjoyed your time with us today. I sincerely believe the Lord is taking his word and is touching hearts and lives in this very season. I believe that you're one of those. And we encourage you to continue to join us uh, on these platforms. But today, before we say goodbye to you, until the next time, I'd just like to take a moment and pray a blessing over you. And uh, I hope that if there's some things that going on in your life that in this season, you'll simply do what the word of the Lord says. Just trust in him. The Bible tells us, taste and see, and you know that he'll be good. So today, I just pray blessings over you. I pray blessings over your family. And if you have yet to surrender your life to the Lord, there is no time like the present to do so. So God bless you today.